In this episode, we talk about thefts of valuables from passengers in the Delhi airport. We also talk about the Tulsi village in Chhattisgarh, known as the village of YouTubers. But first, we talk about the Kano San village in Gujarat, which came under the spotlight due to an alleged case of discrimination against a Dalit person. Hi, I'm Rahil Filipos, and you are listening to Three Things, the Indian Express News Show. The Kano San village, located in northern Gujarat, is one of the many villages in the state that comes under the Samra scheme and are recognized as a Samras village, a place that has achieved social harmony. Now, as part of the scheme, the villagers do not take part in elections. When we spoke to the Indian Express's Parimal Dabhi, he explains the Samra scheme to us. Instead of electing a person, their representative, they select a person and they don't go to elections. And like that, without going to the elections, they select their entire Gram Panchayat, including the Sarpanch. So when a village goes Samras, they don't go to polls. And after formation of the body, the government gives such a village special incentives. If a village is not going to elections and they select their representatives with consensus, it means that there is harmony in the village. So that is the whole uh, idea of having a Samras village. Parimal tells us that right now, about 2200 people reside in the Kanosan village, with over 90% of them belonging to the Thakur community, which comes under the other backward classes category. Now, as mentioned earlier, this village is currently grappling with a controversy related to discrimination. And at the centre of it is the village's only fair price shop. This shop is run by Kanti Parmar, who belongs to the Dalit community. Kanti Parmar, he is 64 years old and he is native of uh, Kanosan village and he has three sons and he lives along with his family at the village. As we spoke with him, he told us that he has been running a fair price shop in Kanosan village, the only fair price shop in the village since 1993. And uh, this fair price shop is the main source of income for the family. I mean, it's their chief source of livelihood. Now, Kanti's livelihood came under threat when people from the Thakur community decided that they would not purchase rations from his fair price shop. As per Kanti Parmar, the entire conflict between him and the Thakur community of the village, it started two, three years back when one leading Thakur community leader of the village came to his fair price shop and uh, demanded uh, food grains from him. So at that time, since his Russian card was not eligible to get these uh, food grains under the National Food Security Act, he refused him. And after that, as per Kanti Parmar, this Thakur community person, he ganged up with some other leading persons from the Thakur community in the village. They ganged up and they started a campaign against him and they urged or threatened some of the, I mean, most of the Thakur community people in the village, asking them to boycott this shop. So then the flow of people getting ration from his shop gradually decreased. And this is how this entire conflict started. In fact, the result of this boycott was too much for Kanti to bear. And earlier this year, he tried to end his life by ingesting a poisonous substance. He survived the incident, but because of the effect of the poisonous substance, his left leg had to be amputated. So after this incident, after his operation and everything, Kanti by his uh, younger son, he has got registered an FIR against four persons of the village, all from the Thakur community. And he has accused them of pushing his father to commit suicide by asking the Kanosan villagers to boycott his shop. When Parimal spoke with members of the Thakur community, they informed him that they had a lot of problems with Kanti Parmar, which was the reason they had stopped purchasing rations from his shop. One of the major complaints is that they are alleging that Kanti Parmar is of very rude behavior. The other complaint that they are making is that they are not getting sufficient and timely food grains at the ration shop from Kanti's uh, fair price shop. And the third complaint they are making is that since uh, Kanti Parmar belongs to the Dalit community, he has been framing them in false uh, cases under the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe Prevention of Atrocity Act, which is commonly known as the Atrocity Act. So they are alleging that he has been framing them in these false cases and therefore they don't want to go to his shop and buy the ration from there. 
Now Kanti has denied these allegations saying that he has been running the shop for decades and has never faced any issue until now. He's saying that all these allegations are incorrect as far as uh, allegations of uh, false cases are concerned he is saying that there are five six cases of atrocities registered in the village in recent past he also says that in barring only one fir in all other firs compromise have been struck with intervention of some of the community leaders of the village so he is refuting all the allegations leveled by the thakur community Now the ongoing conflict between Kanti and the villagers soon reached the district collector of Patan Arvind Vijayan prompting him to initiate an inquiry into the allegations and uh, after holding meetings with the two sides the Kanti Parmar side and the Thakur side on September 12 the collector passed an order and he transferred all the ration cards of kanosan around 436 something from kanosan to neighboring edla village i must also mention that uh, as the controversy was brewing and people had stopped buying ration from kanti parmar's fair price shop most of the people from the thakur community they were buying their ration from other uh, neighboring villages under the one nation one ration card scheme of the government So after this order the collector has transferred all the ration cards to the neighboring Edla village and the collector has also ordered that the fair price shop uh, administrator of Edla has to provide the food grains at the Kanosan village itself i mean it means that they don't have to go to Edla village to get their ration and what's interesting is that the district collector transferred Kanti Parmar and his family's ration card to the neighboring Edla village as well Now as we mentioned earlier the fair price shop is Kanti Parmar's only source of income and this decision by the collector could potentially jeopardize his livelihood So once all the cards have been transferred to the neighboring village he will not get any customers okay to buy ration from his uh, shop so if that is stopped then his license to run this fair price shop will also be cancelled and in that way the chief source of the income of the family will be cancelled that is what his fears are so the family is considering to approach a court of law to challenge this decision transfer of the ration cards so that is the one option they are considering right now however the gujarat government said that the district collector's decision wasn't based on any discrimination and that the grievances of the thakur community were genuine So following the Indian Express uh, report the director of food and civil supplies of the Gujarat government they have issued a clarification saying that there was no discrimination in the entire incident and that the decision was taken after considering and finding substance in villagers complaints against Kanti Parmar's fair price shop so they are also saying that the decision was taken after finding substance in their complaints and complaints of rude behavior and after discovering that there were disparities and discrepancies in the stock levels at this kanti parmar's fair price shop so the government is saying that there was no discrimination in this particular incident now despite this clarification from the gujarat government parimal says that such an incident raises concerns about caste discrimination in the state especially when considering the fact that kanosan is a samras village with supposed social and communal harmony it definitely raises questions in one minds as to under what circumstances a village is declared or it goes a samras way when this village was a samras village and still such an incident is being reported from such a village so it obviously raises questions in one's mind as to under what circumstances a village is declared or it goes samras way in gujarat and next we talk about thefts at the delhi airport For a while now the Delhi airport has been witnessing a rising number of thefts. As of September 19 this year, at least 30 passengers have complained of their personal items being stolen from their checked-in baggage. And according to the Indian Express's Anubjit Sur, the culprits have been stealing some pretty high-value items. Like the items that are mostly stolen from these baggages are like mobile phones, gold jewelry, cash, like luxury watches, like high-end watches. In many of these cases the culprits have been found to be among the luggage loaders who load and unload cargo on the airplanes 
In fact, the police have so far arrested 25 luggage loaders just this year for allegedly pocketing valuables while ferrying bags to the planes. So, like, these are the persons who are with the luggage from the point you have given it for check-in and to the point that the luggage is kept inside the aircraft belly, right? But these are the obvious persons because they are given the responsibility of carrying it from the terminal to the aircraft. Now, according to police officials, most of these thefts were carried out in a similar fashion. They most frequently took place inside the belly of the aircraft, a spot without enough cameras or supervisors. Arnabjeet breaks down their modus operandi. So basically the theft can happen two ways. It can either happen inside the terminal or it can happen inside the aircraft hold. So it happens inside the air terminal. How? Because there are a lot of black spots inside the airport, like the areas which are beyond the reach of CCTV footage. So what they do is like they have a pin or a screwdriver with them. It's like a, they have a, like a four or five minute conversion time. They break into the zip. They look for things. If there is, you, they can find something valuable, they can feel something. They get out either the mobile or a watch or a gold or, or chain, anything. Mostly chains. There are a lot of chains and uh, stuff that is kept in the check-in bags of people. Even though airlines have advised against it, but they to still keep it. They pick out all those stuff. They keep it in a place like which is beyond CCTV footage, uh, like in a specific area and then they hold it there and when they want to exit they hide it under their undergarments and then they exit the terminal once their shift ends and Arnabjeet says that very often the culprits don't act alone there have been instances where gangs of loaders have banded together to carry out thefts at massive scales now like Arnabjeet mentioned a big reason why there have been an increase in thefts at the airport is because of CCTV blind spots so Delhi police has issued notices to these airlines because according to the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security Guidelines, you need to have cameras, at least two night vision cameras inside the hold so that the activity of these loaders is um, surveilled. But Anabjit says installing CCTV cameras all over the terminals and runways isn't as easy as it may sound. Here he explains why. So, according to aviation experts I spoke to, they said that they cannot install cameras that is beyond what is the default this thing is, the default make of the airplane. Like, it's very difficult to install it. Uh, like, off record also, they told me that there is a lot of wiring and everything involved, which might tamper with the overall structure of the airplane. So, like, there is a lot of agencies are involved, BCAS is involved, the civil aviation ministries are involved, and... Right now, there are no per se guidelines per se of installing cameras. That's what Delhi police is issuing notice to these airlines. But the senior expert that I spoke to, he told me that it's not very easy because it goes against the make of the airline. Police officials believe that the reason that these thefts have become so commonplace of late is because airlines are not following guidelines laid down by the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security or BCAS. Here, Arnabjit explains what these guidelines say. According to BCS, there has to be two camera holes inside all aircraft bellies. They have to be clear. They have to show the port, the loaders putting in luggages. Like it has to have a whole view of the whole belly. Right. This is the first guideline. The second guideline is that all the trolleys should be sealed and not unsealed. A lot of trolleys are unsealed. That leads to these loaders taking advantage of it and like taking out the baggage and like quickly getting stuff out. Third, there has to be a supervisor from the vigilance team that has to be with them throughout the whole operation. And he also has to uh, ensure that no such incidents take place. He has to ensure frisking. And in a lot of instances, the aircraft staff only has lodged the FIR, not the victim, because even they detect that some of this, these things are happened because obviously the loader service can be their employees also. So it gives a bad name to their airline only. So uh, these are the prominent three guidelines on based on which Delhi Police has issued notices to these airlines that these are the guidelines that are not being followed and that's why these loaders are being arrested and there have been several cases at the Delhi airport. And off late, the Delhi police has been stepping up efforts to rein in these incidents of thefts. Apart from trying to enforce the BCAS guidelines that Arnabjeet mentioned earlier, they have also been regularly supervising and frisking these loaders. So basically, Delhi police started a drive six months ago. And since they saw that there have been a lot of such instances where both domestic and international passengers have been complaining. So Delhi police has prepared a whole proforma 
where they are tick marking which all things are being followed so basically they have created a two inspector team like a whole team has been prepared which carries out random checkings of loaders because all these loaders have a bcas a security identity card so they see that if there is identity card or not they see if they carry out frisking if something is found on them they are arrested then and there like basically apart from the supervisor delhi police team keeps a tab on them from the terminal seeing that if they are not performing in a suspicious manner the job that they do also like there are a lot of awareness drives because cisf is also involved apart from delhi police cisf is the one that is the first responder so cisf officials have told me that um, yeah it happens due to black spots only and the delhi airport authority delhi police and cisf have actively told passengers not to keep their valuables um, inside the check in and just to keep it inside their hand baggage but still such stuff happens because like obviously there is a lot of lack of awareness on the part of passengers also but that's what delhi police is doing right now and like this drive will go on and like right now it shows that the numbers are decreasing only but it's still far from what it should be and in the end we talk about a village in chatisgarh Tulsi village which is located around 45 kilometers from the city of Raipur had gained a lot of attention last year for producing an astonishingly high number of YouTubers. This village with a population of 10,000 people has given rise to 40 content creators earning it the title of the village of YouTubers. And this is why earlier this month the district administration put in place specific measures to help these creators in improving their content and enhancing their professional skills. To know about these measures and the village of YouTubers, my colleague Ucha Sanman speaks to the Indian Express's Jay Prakash Naidu in the segment. So, Jay Prakash, can you begin by telling us why have we seen so many YouTubers coming out of the Tulsi village? Yeah, so for uh, several decades now, the villagers are performing Ram Lila during Diwali, and many youngsters have taken inspiration from it. They have taken up acting, writing, singing, directing as hobbies. So some villagers took their talent to YouTube and got remarkable success. For example, uh, villagers like Gyanendra Shukla, who runs Being Chhattisgarhia, and Keshav Vaishnav, who runs K Music. Both of them have over two crore views till now. And seeing them, other villagers got inspired and started their own YouTube channels. When I visit the village, the villagers were telling me there are forty of them running YouTube channels. Right, and could you tell us how the village and its content creators came into the limelight? Yeah so during my interactions with the YouTubers they were telling me they got this tag last year it happened when one of the YouTubers from the village his name is Jay Prakash Verma he went to a meeting kept last year during monsoon with the government and the meeting was for all influencers so there Verma spoke about his village and that's how you know others came to know and the media covered them last year right and soon after that their talent got the attention of Raipur district collector Sarveshwar Bhure so what did he do when he came to know about the village Yeah so I spoke with the collector he said that he got the information from his colleague and when he uh, visited the village he was surprised to see that there was a lot of talent and uh, then he decided to use uh, corporate social responsibility funds and district mineral funds to sponsor a digital studio and also very soon they will get a skill center where you know they will be taught how to make these videos and some civic skills will be imparted to them and uh, they will have a digital studio where they can make uh, videos for free of cost and then very soon the skill center will help them with more expertise and what did the youtubers say about how the studio and the skill center will benefit them So I spoke with around ten YouTubers there. The ones with popular YouTube channels like Being Chhattisgarhia and K Music said it will save forty percent of their total cost of production. And for singers, it will save a lot of money as they do not need to travel to other cities for recording. Some nominal cost will be taken for maintaining the studio. There are around four to five editors. already there in the village but with the skill center which will come up soon they will learn new things like digital marketing graphic designing and sound mixing for the self learning using youtube videos will help them to use the studio better one of the youtubers abhishek verma who started off in 2018 said he used wifi at railway stations and colleges to download software further he spent hours to export the videos due to his weak laptop and this was the case with other youtubers as well so verma said things will be much easier now and it's all about hard work for these budding youtubers and the zila panchayat ceo abhinash mishra said one of the villagers got a private contract for some digital work by self learning so the potential needs to be explored he said 
You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. It was written and produced by me, Rahel Philippos, Ucha Sarmin, who spoke to Parimal Dabhi for the first segment, and Shashank Bhargav. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone who you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at the Express Podcast and write to us at podcast at the rate indianexpress.com. 